he was my first true love. I never, my family loved me, I don't mean that, but I never knew love until I... Hey, <laughs> hey folks, DJ here. Oh, I forgot to do it. Oh, I did. It's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I keep... Okay, so today we have our first hour, not our, our first guest on the on the episode, on the podcast today. It's, it's our oldest. This is Weston. Y'all don't get to see him very much. But today it's about him, all about him and, and his little existence in this world. Uh, I have received... Uh, I don't remember what video it was where I had mentioned on there that Daniel adopted Weston a long time ago. And since then, and since I started these episodes, um, I have gotten a ton, a ton of emails. Some of them very invasive, asking questions about him and all kinds of stuff. Some that I'm, some, some questions I'm not going to answer, but... Some that, that I am, and I'm going to kind of give you the backstory and on, on Weston here. <laughs> so you can just sit and listen and interject if you, so if you need to. <laughs> so I graduated high school in 2000, and I was in a relationship with his biological father, and we were off and on for probably two years. Uh, wasn't a great relationship by any means. That's why it was off and on all the time. And, you know, you're 19, 20 years old, and it's just not, I don't know, just life, you know, and learning. And then um, I ended up, I got pregnant. And I knew that it wasn't going to work out permanently. I knew that getting married was not the solution. So we did not get married. I, I did not want a uh, divorce on my life resume and I, I knew that that would happen because of the current state our relationship was in. Um, and I, I mean, we, I just decided to, to keep him and a lot of people tried to talk me out of keeping him and that was never an option for me. Um, I've always been a very independent person and I, I knew that it would be hard raising him alone, but I knew that I could do it. And I, I was, I will say this, I was not in a good place when I got pregnant with him. I was very lonely and I was living on my own, but it was just, just a weird time trying to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. And I had no desire to go to college back then. I really did just want to be a mom, but obviously not, not in the order that it, it was happening. But, um, so I had Weston and he was born in May uh, of 2002, almost the 2013, <laughs> 2002, and um, you know, when whenever I was pregnant with him, I decided that I had was going to have to to do something as you know to make a really good living. I loved banking and doing that kind of stuff at the time, and that's what I wanted to do was just be a banker. But that income was not gonna not gonna work. It was barely working for just myself, and so uh, I decided to to go to college. And so that's what I started doing right after I had him. And um, me and his biological father ultimately outside of court decided that it would be best that he didn't have to go back and forth. Um, you know, my, my ex was uh, doing his own life and uh, he was getting married and um, I'm pretty sure at that time he was overseas in the military. and. So we, and then Daniel and I had gotten together and we were getting married. And so ultimately we just decided that it would be best for Weston um, that Daniel adopted him. So Weston didn't have to experience the back and forth between parents. Uh, he and I both experienced that when we were kids and it was very hard on us. Uh, and so we, we didn't want that for Weston. So we ultimately decided to do that and Daniel and I got married in 2006 when Weston had just turned four years old. Uh, and 
then in 2000, I think we got it finalized in 2000, I think seven. I think it was finalized in 2007 when you were five. Um, and so Daniel always makes a joke now that, that Weston is uh, bought and paid for. <laughs> uh, so, um, so anyway, that's, that's how Weston came about into this world. Uh, this is one episode that, um, or one conversation that makes me sweat and <laughs> because um, he uh, he was my first true love. I never my family loved me, I don't mean that, but I never knew love until I held him. <laughs> Uh, as wonderfully um, complicated and difficult <laughs> as he can be, um, he was my reason for everything, and I I screwed up a lot. You know, I don't I didn't really know what I was doing, and um, I knew what I didn't want to do, and uh, and I just. Um, he, I, I was not planning for him at that time. You know, there, he would joke every once in a while and say, oh, I was an accident, you know. And he, he wasn't planned for that time. But God had a plan. And uh, God knew what he was doing. And God knew what I needed. And uh, in, in the way that he did, uh, looking back, you know, I mean, even when I was pregnant, you know, I was scared to death and, you know, can I do this? Do I want to do this? Is this, is this okay? You know, and I wasn't going to church at the time. And, but looking back, um, every, every step, every hard thing, um, was worth it. I mean, at least I think you were worth it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, oh my goodness. Um, on, there's a still on TikTok, uh, and I just happened to see it a while back. And, you know, it's like this motivational speaker kind of guy. And he says on there, if uh, a woman has a daughter first, it's because the, the Lord said she needed to mature. But if a woman has a son first, it's because she needed to know the real meaning of love. And um, I learned a lot about love, and um, he was my baby. And uh, my mom, you know, always made jokes that I would never um, have a hard time finding any, anyone to love Weston, that it would always be me that would be <laughs> the chore. Uh, and I don't know if Daniel would agree. <laughs> <laughs> But instantly, um, Daniel and Weston hit it off, and it was literally like Daniel had never not been there. Um, it was just so amazing with him. And we were, I mean, he was 20, 21, and I was 23, and I thought there's no way this guy is going to want me because I have this little little guy running around following me everywhere. <laughs> And, um, and he did. And, you know, there were a few times I'd have to, Weston would be, you know, doing something he shouldn't have been. And I'd have to say, listen, you're going to have to get on to him, <laughs> you know, and I wish it was still that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have to do that so much anymore. Uh, but you know, us three, uh, grew up together and, you know, the first time he called him dad and, I mean, by the time we got married, he was calling him dad, and uh, it was just such a wonderful, wonderful ride. And uh, do you, I mean, do you remember him ever not being there? 
Do you, do you have any memories of when you were little? Mm -mm. Of it just being you and I? Well, when we were living in the apartments in Davis, yeah. But other than that, no. <clears throat> this one's full of unsightly words here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. camera shot. Uh, but I don't know where else I want to go with this. Do you? Is there anything you wanna you wanna add to it? What? Mm -hmm. do <clears throat> I just I feel like I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today without him coming into her life and my life. So I mean I'm really blessed and grateful to have him. So. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, Dad, do you want to come join us real quick? I don't have a microphone. I don't care. You can, you can just lay next to me and <laughs> use mine. I can scoot. You, you don't Here, want me scoot to this way. Like, you want me to do the Earl thing? <laughs> no. No, just hey guys. sit. <laughs> enough room? Yes, I have enough room. <laughs> there you go. Don't kiss me. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you, you tell what it was like for you? I don't know what to do with my hands. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what part? <clears throat> Did you know your camera's crooked? No. Looks very crooked to me. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a microphone. I'm going to get real close. Uh, I, I mean... I don't know. I feel I feel awkward jumping in on the middle of this. So, um, it, it, I don't know. I I don't know how to even even explain it other than what you, what you said, really. Because no, I wasn't prepared to be a parent at twenty one years old. Like that wasn't what I had thought of or had in mind or whatever. But it's just what happened, and it worked out, and it was great. Like everything was. I don't know, it felt like that was what we were supposed to be doing. And yeah. I mean, I was in college and living a normal college life until I met you. <laughs> and then you were like, you're coming home with me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, it, just, it just worked out. Like, I don't know. Like you said, I mean, I mean, three, four-year-old Weston was so, like attached to me and attached to my dad. Like, yeah, that was yeah, the big thing for me to. is... Like my my dad was the my person that I looked up to, and you know most of uh, let's see most of my dating career is that what you want to call it? <laughs> most of my dating life, he didn't really wasn't real high on the girls that I brought around. Like it was, and as soon as you came into the picture, he was a hundred percent on board with it. He loved it, mm -hmm. and him and Weston bonded really really quick too mm -hmm. and that meant a lot to me because I knew even then we knew my dad was dying of cancer I mean you only knew him for six months but I mean you talked about that on here in the past about how he would go pick him up from school and bring him here and then be like you can come get him later it's fine <laughs> yeah you know and they they had a really good relationship and that just kind of solidified the deal for for me even like it made it easier to go okay I, my dad, I trust my dad, and he understands that he's on board with this. It's not something he's like, hey, you need to watch out. You don't need to date this woman with a kid. I remember being, like, super scared about that. Like, I met him the first time uh, at your family's 4th of July. Weston and I went, and I was so scared. I was scared to death that he was going to hate the fact that I had a kid. And um, it couldn't have been more from the opposite. I mean, I really think he liked Weston before he liked me. <laughs> <laughs> He was really cute back then. He didn't he have all this hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he talked too. Like yeah. He had whole conversations yeah. without ours. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, anyway, I just, I know there are other families out there kind of in the same situation. Um, I, I will say I, I got an email and it just like rubbed me wrong. Um, I don't feel like we are a blended family. Uh, that is not what we are. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that because I have a blended family. And, um, but it's very blended. Yeah, 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 it is over there. Uh, but our home is not, is not blended. We don't, we don't do the, you know, Daniel is not the stepdad. Like, 
that's never even in question. Uh, he is he is the dad, uh, always the dad, the best dad most of the time. He's got his moments. <laughs> I mean, you know, this one's you know the good kid. I mean, but he's got his moments. I'm a great kid. Are you? I'm a great young adult. Let's <laughs> say you're. 19 yeah, years old. Almost, we got this kid there. Almost 20. Yeah. Fuck, we call me a kid, Mom. <laughs> I know. He tells me that all the time. I'm like, you kids come eat. And he's like, I'm not a kid. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I know that there are a lot of other families out there that are going through this. And I'm not saying it's it's with, not without challenges because whether you know Daniel adopted him or he didn't, um, <laughs> there's challenges anyway um but that was never an issue for us i mean daniel just hopped in and uh just just like he had been parenting forever and um i mean we both screwed up and we we all three grew up together and we're still learning and this guy throws stuff at us all the time and we're like okay not, not literally throw <laughs> no 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 <laughs> he's not like throwing remotes at us no, or no, something that's what she did she <laughs> I might have thrown a remote once, <laughs> uh, but um, no, it's just, I feel like it, you're just parenting and it is like 150% a roller coaster all the time, uh, especially when, you know, their hormones start rolling and, and life is challenging for them and, you know, we still have our own lives and, um, but I, I hope that this episode, um, not that we are perfect by any means, but, you know, we're out there and we, we put this information out there. And I just hope that it, it can help you and trust in the Lord because, you know, when I was sitting there 19 and pregnant, I had no idea, you know, how I was going to make it through it. Like money and, you know, just, just doing it. How am I going to do it by myself? And, you know, God had a plan. He had... He had this guy coming and uh, kind of to, not to rescue me, because I was doing just fine without him. But, um, you know, uh, he just he just knew, and he had that in, in the plan all along, and I just ultimately had to trust that. And I wanted to be the best mom that I could be for Weston, because I was really all he had. I mean, my family, obviously, but uh, I was not going to be that, 19 20 year old kid that didn't take care of their son that was not even an option my family was not going to be raising him for me and they did not uh we lived on our own i mean i the whole time i mean we never lived with my parents and um then you know daniel and i met and got married and um uh, anyway just about that quick it seemed like <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It wasn't that quick. <laughs> it was a year. Uh, but when you know, you know. And uh, I think, I just think God does everything for a reason, uh, no matter what it is. <sighs> and this was our story. So maybe it can help you all. And I don't know. What are your thoughts? Anything else? Nope. This is your story. I know. I'm trying really hard not to go back to crying. So. I'm really sweaty, though. <laughs> Do you have anything? Nope, this is your story. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's actually your yeah. story. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going we're gonna to answer a few questions real quick. Um, I got an email right a long time ago when we first started this, and um, her name is Lauren, and she explained her daughter's situation basically and said that she was in the same kind of boat and um, had a son out of wedlock and she harbored a lot of guilt uh, about it and she said have you struggled with that uh, early on yeah um, I even did some guilt parenting <laughs> uh, for a little while because I felt so guilty that, I mean, it's, this was probably before Daniel, you know, I, I just felt so guilty for, you know, felt bad for him not having that male figure, you know, in my mind at the time, you know, I didn't know how long it was going to be. Was he going to be 10? Was he going to be, you know, 15? And, you know, uh, Jeez, you're planning on being single a long time. I, 
no, I, you just don't know, you know, and that's just things, you know, I thought about, and um, it, it was, um, sometimes it was overwhelming, and, um, but then, I don't know, you just grow, and you, you get past that, and once I started um, getting, when Daniel and I got together, and we were in church all the time, and reading our Bible, and praying all the time, and, um, you know, it just, it just brought me peace. And I knew that I was where I was supposed to be. God put us there. And um, so I, I got over the guilt. I mean... Hey, before you go on, I think that's one place where a lot of people struggle. Is they feel like getting into the church, they're going to be judged out of the church mm -hmm. by the people there. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I mean, <laughs> there's a, you know, a lot of people, there's a phrase that goes... You know, somebody walked into a church or they said they were going to go to church, but they didn't want to go because it was full of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, well, come on in. We got room for one more, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, you're, you're humans. But I think in the beginning, a lot of people feel like in, in our, like our situation, like we were not married and they did people that didn't really know some, most people there knew us, but mm -hmm. they knew we weren't married and there was a kid like, what's the story? And a lot, I feel like a lot of people will shame themselves out of ever going to church oh, well, because the, they think they're going to get judged away. You know? Well, I definitely got judged. I mean, from the moment I, you know, people found out I was pregnant. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm my gosh. Church but, journey, yeah, no. In, in our um, church. Yeah, I never, I never, I might have felt that, but it wasn't because they, people in our congregation put that on me. That was just what I felt. Yeah. I felt like people were just looking at me, judging me. And, I mean, not in church necessarily, but... Lord of mercy, um, I was definitely judged, and it was hard. I mean, I was not a bad kid. I was not a bad teenager, you know. I had really good grades. I, you know, just I was an athlete, you know. But, you know, what all my friends were doing, they didn't get caught. I got caught, you know, and that was just one of those things. And um, that was probably the hardest is the judgment out in public. It just, you know, it... It kind of ate me up a little bit for a while. That uh, still happens, though. Like, yeah. I can promise you that still happens. When we walk into a basketball gym, and we and for years, like when we walk into a basketball gym or a baseball field or whatever sporting event Weston's got going on, we were always the youngest parents. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, especially now that he's in, you know, college age, like, mm -hmm. most of the parents are 10, 12 years older than us. So here we come strolling, and then they're like, what y'all doing here? <laughs> yeah. Know? And that, I feel like that happened a lot, like in Little League, because mm -hmm. now, like with Houston and Emily, when we go to ball games, it's our friends, people our age and younger now, even with Houston, yeah, that are there as other parents. When we went to Weston's t-ball games or Weston's, you know, coach pitch games, like, yeah, we weren't old enough to be there as parents, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, all the parents there were ten, fifteen years older than us, and like we had, I feel like. We had Chase and Stacy. Mm -hmm. You know, they were in the same position, so yeah. we kind of bonded with them. And you know, Logan and Weston played ball all through, and like it was kind of a, it was just us. And then like we, I mean, I really felt like there was a lot of judgment from other, oh sure, not just local people. I, I'm not saying that, but just in general, like when you yeah. walk in, they're like, oh, well, look at them. Mm -hmm. They're barely older than their kid. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be technical about it, Weston was born. May 13th, 2002. Mm -hmm. I graduated high school May 15th, 2002, <laughs> roughly, yeah. and turned 18 on July 13th, 2002. Yeah. So, he was. I was 17 when he was born. Yeah. Didn't know it, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, uh, question number two. Don wants to know, how did basketball come into the family? That's a good question. I, I, <laughs> don't ask this guy. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Don't ask him. So I, I, I played basketball. No, that doesn't count. Fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. I literally ran down the court, looked like a giraffe trying to yo-yo <laughs> his way down the court. That's literally yeah, what I no. looked like. So I would say for me, my mom played basketball. Um, and so by the time I was, you know, old enough, uh, I loved it. Um, I, it was my favorite. <clears throat> I did softball too, but <clears throat> basketball was 150% my favorite. I was tall and, you know, I was pretty good. And uh, I passed that, all that athletic ability onto this one. All of it.
he took it all and like ran with it. <laughs> he went and dunked it a couple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, y'all have seen all of his athletic stuff and he's crazy gifted there. Uh, and third question. Uh, I think it's Gary. Is that how you say it? Or Jerry? I'm assuming yeah. Gary. Huh? G-E-R-R-Y. Is that Gary? Okay, we're going to roll with Gary. Um, Gary wants to know, where do you get your inspiration when picking song of the week? Uh, really, it can just be anything. Uh, I go through spurts where, you know, I have a favorite new song or something, a moment happens during the week and I hear a song, whether it's on my playlist or just, I just hear it and I don't know, it's just kind of whatever I'm going through and whatever I'm feeling at the moment and I'm like, okay, that's what, that's the song and I just, it just kind of speaks to me. Uh, I've always been a music person, uh, always, that's how I kind of uh, cope with life and stress and um I just, I just love music. We're, we're pretty big music people. What instruments do you play? <laughs> I do not. Now, I, my papa did get me a fiddle when we were little, me and my brother both. And we learned a little bit then, but... So you're more of a singer? Yeah, I perform in the car. <laughs> okay. Nobody pays me, though. It's an episode, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not terrible. Uh, okay, so with that being said... Do you have any idea what song of the week I would pick for you and I? What's our song? I've got sunshine. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> um. I used to sing it to you all the time. I even put it on that, that little uh, keychain for you. Oh, he never looked at that. Yeah, you didn't use your Spotify on that. That's right, it wouldn't work. We'll have to look into that. <laughs> Ain't no mountain high by Marvin Gaye. No, I was not about to think of that one. No? I haven't listened to that for Oh, ever. that hurts my feelings. Jeez. It's really special for one of you. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's special for me. I sing it to him <clears throat> as a baby all the time. Uh, and I also want to throw out another song. And um, it's by Brad Paisley. And uh, it's... Waiting on a Woman. Amen. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it is, um, he didn't have to be. Every time I hear that song, I just lose it and, and cry. So, makes me think of you. I'm glad it doesn't make you think of somebody else. Shut up. That. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So, I think that's all we've got for today. This one wasn't super chatty, but at least he was here. <laughs> so, uh, we will... We might be bringing some more guests back. I bet we can get old Chatty Kathy in here sometime. No. No, she don't want to. So every once in a while we call Emily Chatty Kathy because uh, she, like, doesn't stop talking. <laughs> so. You know, she doesn't mind dancing on video. She'll do TikToks all day long and dance. Yeah. But get her to talk on a video, yeah, it's not going to happen right now. It's kind of how I am. But she, like, <laughs> force her, and then it's just going to be... Mm. Well, if you all have questions for me or Weston or Daniel, shoot us uh, an email at afhpodcast at yahoo.com. And otherwise, we will see you all next week. Anything else? No. Nope. Do your best. What a smell. I suppose at mm. least attempt to hide it a little. Oh, shit. Sorry about that. Right on the Adam's apple. <laughs> Mom saw it coming. She didn't say anything. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, I don't have my hat. I'll be like, what the crap? Nobody calls our home phone. I'm going to put it on. This is Lester's. You know, Carl and Lester. Hello? This is the, the funny thing. He, he likes me to wear the hat and like and do his like intro. Because he always says, Sorry. hey folks, Lester here. And so I say, hey folks, DJ here. No puppies for sale. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, More so we just talk. I'm going to throw up in my mouth. So are we like live? 
No. Are you crying and you haven't started the video? No. So like people watching this right now? No. Oh. No. Oh. It's not a live video. This will air on Sunday. On Sunday? On Sunday. Mm -hmm. Is all this right here gonna be on it? He'll get some of it out. Okay. Alright, let's uh Okay. Hey folks. No no no. You can't do that. Don't be picking at your face. I'll scratch my nose. Okay, well don't. 